Hello everyone, my lovely professional divas. Welcome, welcome to our yet new level of panel discussions. So by the time everyone is joining, let me start the show. Okay, International Women's Day. We have been celebrating this for the whole month. I know you all and many of you have joined a lot of events um, for International Women's Day, virtually and even face to face. It's a global event celebrated every year on March 8th. And this, this year, the theme is Cracking the Code which highlights the need to break down the barriers and create a more inclusive world. But as we discussed last time, last week we had our International Women's Day panel discussion with the strong women from community and we talked about a lot of stuff and based on the um, request again, based on the couple of questions that we were getting and based on all of your um, uh, suggestions as well, we are back again with another level of women's panel discussion. But this time, topics are a bit different. So before I go ahead with the conversation, let me quickly call out and invite our panelists on this discussion. And I will give them chance so they can introduce themselves and then probably we'll start with the questions. So first of all, on my screen, I have Harita. Hi everyone, this is Harita. Um, I'm based in Sydney. You can call me a media and a community person. Been with the media for more than two decades, uh, India and in Australia as well. Uh, been to the community person, so I got many of the national and international recognition for my community and the journalism work. I was India's youth representative for Commonwealth from 2005 to 2012. Um, dealing with lots of youth issues, making the youth policies and the different stuff. And um, a new adventure started last year, doing a small business online, stationaries and all that. So the third hat is on my thing. So yeah, I'm a person and I, my weakness is I love myself. I love myself. And I want, I like the inspir inspired stories. I love the positive stories. And that's what my forte in the journalism as well. So I always try to highlight what what's happening positive rather than um, focusing on the negative. Yeah, when it requires questioning, I do it, but my focus is on the positive. So that's me. Thank you so much, Harita. A very talented uh, person in the women's panel discussion today. So congratulations for your new venture and we wish you all the best ahead as well and keep spreading the positivity um okay next to harita we have chris malika bhatra she is beautifully dressed up in the blue sari the day one navratri color royal blue as well so thank you chris welcome um introduce yourself please thank you Sita. first of all thanks for this opportunity i'm really really honored to be sharing the panel virtually with such amazing people um, before I give my little humble introduction, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which, from which I'm speaking to you, the people of the Kulin Nation, and I'd also pay my respect to the elders, past, present, and emerging. And speaking about myself, um, I migrated to Melbourne in 2013 because I got a, a PhD scholarship to pursue my scholarship from PhD from Swinburne University, which is in Melbourne in nanobiotechnology. I graduated in 2017, but it's been three years that I've moved into a rail organization in Melbourne. Um, when I'm not working, I have um, the founder and host of two Melbourne-based podcasts. Um, one of them is called Coconut Chats, and we often talk about stigmatized issues in the South Asian community. I'm also, I have multiple chat shows in Brisbane and Sydney, and I'm a trained Indian contemporary dancer. I have my own group in Melbourne. I also have my own blog. I've been blogging since 2015. I've gotten some of my public articles published. And um, I also like to take photography. And uh, apart from all these, when I'm not doing any of these, I just Netflix and eat and sleep. That's just a little bit about myself. So thank you once again for having me on the panel. Thank you, Chris. But I wonder if it is a little bit, what will be the next level then? Dance, <laughs> photography, your podcast, and then your PhD. The next, the next level, Puja, is to learn how to make a round roti. 
Oh, <laughs> many of us are not there yet, so don't worry. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> but thank you so much for being here. Um, it's a pleasure for all of us to have you on this panel discussion. Um, okay, let's move on to next one. Aditi, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Pooja, for having me on uh, this chat uh, and the panel discussion with already I've heard from Harita and Dr. Chris and Kavita is there. So I'm really feeling very empowered. Um, I'm Aditi Bhaseen. I'm uh, basically from India. I moved here about five years back. A marketing professional. I have spent close to about 15 years in the marketing industry. I have also launched a couple of initiatives back in India as well as here in Sydney, where I'm based out of. Um, essentially, I would say, you know, a person who tries to do wear many hats, not to the level that both Harita and uh, Dr. Chris, you are uh, probably there. So, but yes, essentially from my perspective, really three things that really determine me are the three C's. I'm a marketing professional, so I'll try and, uh, you know, keep going back to the four P's like you have. So for me, I feel that my career is something which really determines what I am. Um, I'm a marketer. I love my job. I have really risen up depend and we'll kind of you know over the course of the discussion today we'll really talk about that but um, someone who's really proud to be a marketer amongst a lot of other adverse factors um, I really work quite high um, heavily along um, within the community that I represent I am an avid volunteer I teach at a couple of initi um, institutions I teach at the TAFE and the UNSW as well I am an avid mentor there as well. And there are causes. So that's the third C for me, the causes of women uh, improving diversity in different corporates. So I am also on the panel of a lot of different boards where I talk to um, organizations to how you know they can really improve the diversity um, and not just do lip service, because that's something which is really an important thing today of being really able to walk the talk. Um, on the personal front, typically, you know, trying to manage a couple of initiatives here too. And the big one is going to try and keep my little ones out of the room while I have that discussion. <laughs> we all are going through that and trying to, you know, wear those hats and trying to multitask. That's yeah. me. I'm really looking forward to learning a lot and really sharing my thoughts today. So thank you, Pooja, and everybody else. Thanks. Thank you, Aditi. That was very lovely to hear about what all you do. It's amazing. How do you do it, by the way? It's just so wonderful to see a mom juggling with us younger kids and then doing all this stuff as well. So good job. Excellent. Great. Thank you so much. Um, next one, we have Kavita. Kavita, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Pooja, and good evening to my fellow panelists. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on here with you all. Good evening, all our viewers. Um, I, I'm not sure how to even divide it, whether it's professional or personal, or it's all personal, or it's all professional. Um, so I'm a consultant. Most of my earning hours, I should say. <laughs> um, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a cons it, we have to pay bills. We all have to, don't we? I'm a consultant to training colleges. So in the areas of education and compliance regulation, and I also teach dance. So that keeps me motivated for the other part and the other part pays for this part. <laughs> um, I'm a classical uh, Bharatanatyam trained dancer. I teach that as well as I take semi-classical and Bollywood classes, whatever the demand is, whatever the students are interested, as long as they're moving and dancing, all age groups. So that's my passion. Apart from those times, you would probably find me at a festival of some sort, whether it be a cultural, religious or um, arts music festival I'm there eating dancing enjoying the music and just loving mingling around people thank you so much Kavita that's really lovely to hear uh, your introduction and how can I miss that the uh, mesmerizing dance performance that you have given to lovely inspirational divas in their face-to-face -face events so totally um acknowledge your talent all the time and thank you so much for being with us today as a panelist and i'm um, really looking forward to start the conversation now because 
it's a very important topic to us to start um, talking about cracking the code. What actually the cracking the code means to you, means to me, means to us, and means to all our audience that who are listening to us, lovely divas. And what exactly have we faced so far in the context? So context for today is the relationships and academics. That's what we, um, we're going to start um, with conversations. And uh, I'll start with uh, Chris. Um, Chris, how do you define gender discrimination in relationships? And what are the examples that you have experienced or witnessed by yourself? Because you've been studying here, you have been uh, you have been going through your own journeys of uh, doing PhD, learning. So, um, in your friendships, let's say, how do you find it has gone the gender discriminations? Which I think this question and this whole umbrella topic is very, very crucial, right? Um, I have to say on my family level, I've never been discriminated just because I was a girl child. Rather, it's quite the opposite. My mom never wanted a son. She got a daughter. And I've been given all the possible freedoms in, obviously, limitations that I don't go berserk and wild, that to drive, to get my dreams up there, to get what I want, right? Um, I'm the only child and my parents were completely fine when I said, I've got the scholarship, I want to move overseas. I don't have any family here, right? We all, what I've made are friends who have now become family over 10 years. But when I came here and there was a time when I was starting to seek alliances probably to get married. And you know how Indians were, these, there are these websites where you put up your profile. We all know that cycle, right? That's yeah. when I started being um, subjected to this topic of being discriminated upon because the first question used to be, oh, you are dark skinned, right? You are dark skinned, your height is of XYZ nature, you've, you're overeducated, so you would not listen to our son. So that's when I realized that, oh, shit, this is a big problem. This is more serious than I envisioned this to be. And it was scary in the beginning because that time I was new to this scenario. I used to take it to heart. I used to come home and cry when, you know, when... I used to listen to all these things, but over time, I'm like, no, it's not my fault. These people need to be educated upon. A woman yeah. who's trying to achieve her dreams or is trying to get some education, there is no reason why you should be discriminating against her. And especially on the basis of your skin color, on the basis of your physical appearance, on the basis of your religion, nobody should be discriminated. Yeah. That's when I realized that I need to speak up about, about it. I need to go on platforms like this where I speak with like-minded people and shed more light because I might have taken my own time to cover my journey. But as we speak, there might be some woman who's going through the same experiences. So if we can empower at least one woman, I feel successful in that journey. And that is the reason we should be having these conversations more often, often than not. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, Thank you, Chris. Um, Aditi, from your perspective, have you ever felt that gender identity um, affected the ways that how uh, it shaped your life or maybe you, have, you were treated very different in your romantic relationships? You know, Pooja, uh, this is quite an interesting question here because um, so I've got an interesting story that I like to share. And it's a little interesting considering that, you know, it's all over. Back in the day in India, it was all over the TV as well. Um, so I married about 11 years back. And I married pretty late according to, um, you know, the Indian age per se. And I was probably, um, I would say I spent about 10 years. And uh, in the arranged marriage I would say just the market, you know, it's the market essentially where you're trying to go and trying to figure out. I rejected 100 boys. I had actually met 100 boys. And I, when I met my husband, he was actually the 101th one. So I called wow. him the 101th. Amazing. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, so essentially those 10 years of trying to find the perfect match, um, I have really gone through many, many, many uh, different types. You know, when you talk about hundreds, you can imagine the different sizes yeah. and shapes, yeah. literally, you know. And I'm just not wanting to be sounding quite um, pathetic here, but I've had some experiences with just like Dr. Chris mentioned, 
I really got me to tears. There were probably, you know, times that you were supposed to also go ahead and really meet up with the boys' family, meet up with their families. They would ask you. They would be like, um, uh, I think, you know, and passing comments essentially. You mm-hmm. are much more educated than the son. How much do you earn? Do you think you would want to leave your job? What will you do when you have kids? Because it's the responsibility of the woman. you know you are definitely going to need to leave that job how would you manage are you going to be um, you know in a position to deal with all the things that we go through will you serve us morning to you when we get up so much so that you know i was like gosh i don't think this is happening i used to come back and tell my parents there was absolutely no pressure from their side essentially from my upbringing i was treated you know just um like dr kris said i i grew up in delhi one of the most metropolitan cities um and i went off to the colleges where we would really talk a lot about uh, you know bra burning and women empowerment i went to lsr which is one of those colleges where we would just do that and after all of this after having you know done my masters and feeling that you know it's time and you want to kind of settle down and really find someone who's who matches up with your wavelength not just anything mm-hmm. else so much so that you know i was to come back and tell my parents i'm like what did you do you know you you guys should have been traditional parents try mm-hmm. to find me someone absolutely and they're like you know sorry that is a choice that we are not making we are definitely not making it on your behalf and i was like that's one of the times that i did feel that you know uh, we do really face that bias um though the society though our educational levels have reached everything from an infrastructural perspective has taken us to that level but when it comes to really going up and finding a life partner or finding even you know your space in a romantic relationship that really there are a lot of things that are expected out of you and not out of your partner and uh, there were times that you know i was told that uh, you travel so much you travel 20 days out of the 30 um do you expect your husband to be a suitcase husband i, I really was dumbstruck i said you know if the same question was asked to the boy would he have a very similar answer we you know would you even even if you know i did have an answer i would just kind of shut up myself and i'm like gosh this is probably one more in the tally list one more down so i feel that you know we do i've kind of gone through that and when i found someone i was completely aghast with the way things just happened um, you know that's another story for another time but uh, you know i do feel that all of those things really took me to a very very they really shaped the person that i am mm. today i'm being mm. given suggestions so that why don't you put a lemon and uh, you know this thing on your skin you'll become a bit more fair or you should have honey in the morning because your voice is a bit too hoarse you know you sound a bit it will be a nice way to get up in the morning with that and i said you been you known me for 2 hours stop oh. passing judgments stop really expecting that so um many more stories but uh, i i think um, you know it's really shaped me things have happened but i really feel that you know if you were able to if i'm able to take that opportunity to go ahead and talk to the women of today talk to the girls who are probably looking at finding a partner these are going to be a lot of uh, things stick in there there's absolutely no silver lining uh, you know uh, what you are going to be expecting in the relationships but just stay there hang in there don't really say that i'm ready to give up my career i'm ready to sacrifice i mean i did it i'll be honest you know in my journey yeah. i did it but i wanted to i became a uh, you know stay at home mom because my kids were there i wanted to do it uh, my husband did that too that was the interesting thing he did that too because you know he wanted to take a break and he said these are my kids also but uh, does that happen in different relationships is a big yeah. question what yeah. is required that education is an important aspect that we should be looking at yeah and how do we spread it how do we make it even more um, av- like available to the normal 
person out there not exactly anyone who is tech savvy who is who is very um, always on the internet and getting information from there but there are ladies there are persons out there including men as well who who doesn't have access to the information so what exactly do we need to do for them to let them know there is no gender gap in this moment what is the society expecting from us continuing with that conversation thank you aditi um kavita if i can ask you um how do you think the the society expectations that aditi has just started the conversation uh, of the gender roles and behaviors impacted the relationship have you faced it how was your reaction what did you do how did it shape your identity in in, in this context um very um uh very appropriate actually to my personal life and i don't um and i share this with with all due respect to all the people that were involved so you know this is by no means i'm just putting a disclaimer there it's no means um directed at blaming or you know seeing one person or a family or a background is higher than the other it's i think it's just how people were raised and how people grew up what they saw around them what we see around us becomes our normal so we behave from that platform um so similar to what chris and uh, aditi have shared that you know in their own personal lives and their family particularly their parents there was no discrimination or bias because they were a female child similarly i was an elder of two eldest of two sorry and a female so i have a younger brother and never did i feel i was a girl child or i was um not given anything you know that my brother was given um and so i had a very good um upbringing yeah. um and not being aware of that there is a discrimination or a bias between the genders um then i married into a family where that was quite prevalent um and so you know you had a role if you were female um you know you didn't come and sit in the lounge room you didn't speak in front of anyone else um you served the tea and then you left the room um you didn't mingle so it was very different to how i was brought up um so that was a huge eye opener uh because you know everybody's family is just like how i grew up um and i married quite young straight after i finished university okay. so i again didn't have that exposure and similarly in my extended family um before i was married so my uncles aunties cousins it was quite similar to my household so i was like what is this like you know we were trained to come in and greet visitors when they came to our home and to sit and have a conversation you know mm-hmm. yeah. um and in in this family and household you were not to approach you were not to come to the door you were not to come into the lounge room so it was very different um and how did that impact my relationship that caused quite a bit of friction because i was very young yeah. i was just getting to know my adult self let alone know my partner who i mm. just met and gotten married to know his parents his brothers and sisters his siblings the nieces and nephews that were already you know there in the relationship when i entered the the the, the family yeah the extended family and then their guests so yes i think that if you are not aware and you haven't experienced it before it does affect your relationship um and it took me a long time to understand um why that was i went through that whole phase of oh they don't like me they're discriminating against me i've come from a different background i've come from a different culture um different traditions and so it's just all about me but it actually wasn't it took me a long long time to yeah. realize it wasn't it wasn't me it was the way they grew up and mm. it was what was expected in their family and their extended family and their community and that's where they were operating from 
It was just a different platform from where yeah. I was raised. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But definitely, it's um, it's a very eye-opening conversations to me because we all face it. We all see it all the time. The statements, the stories that you guys are telling me, it's so resonating with what I hear with my clients all the time. Uh, but we don't do anything for that. We just take it for granted. We don't speak for it because our parents told us this is how you should behave. You should, you should, you should. Not the other way around, how he should or they should. It's always should for us. So how we actually break down the gender stereotypes and the biases in the coming generations for all of us, specifically talking about the relationships. Um, thank you so much, Kavita, on this one. Harita, I would like to ask you on this particular one. Um, if I'm sure you, based on the conversations and being from the media industry, being being from the journalist part, uh, side of the the. Uh, person personalities you may be advising us or the people out there what steps can we take to break down the gender stereotypes and how uh, effectively we can raise the voice for equality or equity in this context definitely that's a lot of thing to be done but i must say like you know when i was listening to you um, especially the chris and aditi I was a bit nostalgic because I gone through the same journey. I yeah. remember once, uh, like, you know, the person, some suitable match came for me and they asked, can she cook? And my mom was like, no, she eats an air and she drinks water. If you like it and you could see the face of, of the family member, they were like, there was so many, there was so many of that kind of incidents happened. So uh, yeah. I, I could totally relate what you were talking about and like, you know, how we go through. Uh, even in today's time, even in today's world, no, I'm not talking only about the India, I'm talking about the Australian community as well, especially the Clade community, or I would go much specific, it's an Indian community. Mm. That's a lot of need where we need to take even a tiny, tiny steps to make a big difference. Because if we don't make a difference, if we don't start conversation at this stage, maybe our kid may not be that sensible, may not understand what's happening. Because as Kavita said, the, the environment, the kid grow, they, yeah. they think it's normal. It's OK. It's 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 OK. But when the somebody from the different environment come and they talk about these kind of stuff, it's never been OK. And then always be in a friction. I recently, in the last six months, I come across with so many of the incidences where the relationship break down. Why? Because no matter you were, it was a love marriage or it was arranged marriage or what was like, you know what, they come here, they struggle together, but somehow when the women, she she becomes uh, she becomes financial independent or tries to learn their financial literacy and something goes wrong 20 years old relationship breaks 25 years relationship breaks why because the sensitivity that yes she is a human being she mm. has similar rights the basic thing what the family is missing to teach the boy yeah. even not the boy it's all it's, it's 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 not the boy but it's the whole society she can speak she can talk she can talk about the finance she can talk about her own identity she she can talk about her personal choices do this do that as you say puja that always should goes for the girl not for the boy yeah that we start doing should for both of them i mm. think this issue we can I don't say it will be eliminated because it's very hard, but yes, we can definitely improve on that side. Because yeah. at this stage, what's happened, another thing is happening, is the parents, they want their daughter to be brought up like independent, strong, empowered women. But yeah. when it comes to the daughter-in-law, the perspective changes. Yes. What is right for the daughter, that is not right for the daughter-in-law. Why? Yeah. We have no answer for that. Why it changes, we have no answer for that. So there are two things happens. Number one is the boy has not learned 
one thing like yes she is a human being she she has that liberty she can do it he has not learned he hasn't seen the thing in her and in his environment so for him it's okay to be dominated side to do that yeah. and also when the lady she or the family from they turn from a parents to parents in law their the envi their their whole perception changes towards that person and yeah. when these two things comes together if we can just point out on these two things and we can take a tiny step to create awareness that okay give a respect as a human being and just as a human being forget about being a female just yeah. as a human being start giving the respect and understand have the harmony and when this thing happens i think half of the problem be easier to solve because only these two points are important because they want everybody wants it may be me in the future i'm not sure that i want my daughter to be brought up independent strong girl but when it comes to the daughter in law we have certain expectation that she should be like this she should know this yeah. she should, she should handle this 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 xyz xyz yeah the society needs to change and it's not only like i'm talking about australia as well it's not only that india it's australia it's in germany it's in uk it's in us yes. it's everywhere it is the same, same. so there is no difference so as a as a as a female i just think if we address only these two issues we can definitely uh, strengthen the relationships and we can you know the yeah yeah thank you harita um before we move ahead i want to acknowledge the audience here we have um yamini rekha and ratandeep saying hello to all of you and lovely to hear about your views and achievements so um thank you lovely ladies for joining us i would like to ask a question to our divas who are listening to us do you think that gender discrimination is more more uh, prevalent in the sexual relationships or in the same sex or heterosexual or what sort of relationships do you see it more happening we definitely need to um start putting our minds as an uh, open conversations and then we'll start finding the right answers and the right uh expectations societal expectations going ahead as well so what you think um our our audience as a divas what you think let us know and then we'll take the conversations ahead Would I just um, to make two cents before we yeah. move forward. Yeah. Um, when you mentioned that we need to speak about, right? We need to be vocal. I've done that part, okay. and that what happens when, as a woman, I'm vocal is I am getting ostracized from the community. Mm. As a woman who speaks her mind, who would not bow down to the norms of the society, who knows what her sexual, physical desires are, this woman is not going to be a good homemaker for our family. Yeah, just because she knows her mind. In fact, yeah. men have come and told me, "You have a strong voice. I don't think I'll be able to control you." That time, I could not answer back. But this is what happened. This is like the other spectrum of the whole problem. When exactly. you start vocalizing your thoughts, this is what I want, and this is what I will want from you. They yeah. will start ignoring you because, in fact. a woman has come up and told me you know what men are going to be intimidated from you because the way you wear your sarees the way you pleat your saree the man is going to be scared of you and this is another inherent problem no matter you talk about indian society australian this is this internal gender discrimination exactly. done by a woman against yes. a woman yes sometimes women will pull you down either they are jealous or they are intimidated by you they will not praise you for your strengths they will go to any lens not all but most of the women with the south asian mindset they will try to pull you down just because i don't know what goes on in their mind like why can't we stand with each other be each yeah. other's friends and not highlight each other's weakness i like to wear my sarees a certain way and if a man is intimidated by that i would like to take it as a good sign because i'm not going to be a woman who's accessible for yeah. each man out there right but this was yeah. told to me told to me by a woman who has been here for a while and i can't even begin to think of the problems ladies have back in south asia where it's a big problem and when you talk about daughter versus daughter in law i think women need to take this patriarchy out of their minds even before men can 
that's what i'm saying like you know in a household we need to have that balance we need to train or we need to tell this to our kids that this is not right you you need to be sensitive even the 10 women can do that to their kid it will make a big difference but the mother because... gets insecure harita the mother of the son is the first person getting insecure when he goes and gets married the first thing i think what she thinks is he has taken she has taken my son she's taken the son away yeah, yeah. is a mature person my stance is this is very clear either don't get your son married tell him if you have to go out and seek fun there are multiple escorts seek yeah. your fun do your business don't get married sit with us live with us forever because you are not ready to let go of your child your umbilical cord is very much in place sorry to say that and you It's are always the case traumatizing not only your son but the innocent girl who comes into your family and any children they have because the whole dynamic of the household becomes very toxic So yes, hundred percent agree. Shed that load before we even start addressing men that this is the problem with you guys. Women are the major problem, I think, in this situation. Um, so I'm hundred percent with you on that one. Just one more addition: when we take both the things into consideration, as daughter versus daughter-in-law and the women versus women, I think, as a general broader perspective. when a person like a daughter in law in law's family it's not totally accepted but that is not a part of the conversation it is definitely a part of the relationships but not as a gender bias in this way when exactly. we are seeing gender bias it's particularly uh, like men versus female yeah. comparisons and totally with you on that one because i deal with this clients all the time when the husband is not even ready to accept as a suggestion and when i as a coach give them the suggestions i as a therapist suggest a male person or a husband to do something they look at me like this really so ab aap mujhe bataoge ki kya karna hai like you will tell me what to what do i need to do now as in because i am a female and i am telling them as a part of my therapy practices you came to me to take my services and now because now you're bringing the gender bias into the picture i have to address that concern as well other than your relationship issues so mm-hmm. i see that all the time it's definitely women versus women issue as well as i see it in the families like mother in law daughter in law daughter and daughter in law shoulds with the daughter a uh, daughter in law but not with a daughter but as an overall relationship concept where do we see that gender bias from the men versus women comparisons and how do we can break the code that's the that's particularly is my worry in the moment for all the women out there right and, and yeah i want to add one more thing because the thing also is happening is because when they they because now the they are getting education they have the access of the education yeah the moment they are getting education the moment they are trying to be independent financially i'm not saying independent as independent but financial yeah. independence i think there there is the biggest gender discrimination comes in the relationship because then that the kind of insecurity comes or some kind of conflict comes up that why she can do it because mm-hmm. generally the finance is a domain of a male person Yes, and when a female tries to enter into that, I, I, I'm, I'm sure you must have come across with that survey where they were t- they were talking to so many of the people aged between twenty to twenty five, and they asked the simple question: How did you learn to walk? How did yeah. you learn to ride your bike? How did you learn this? And then they asked started asking the question: Did you learn your financial literacy? Yeah, mm-hmm. and you can see the answer varies yeah. like. we don't know we don't know yeah. we always got whatever where the ma- where the male he was getting so there's a gender discrimination because this thing is there here it also comes as a stereotype of the society societal expectation that yeah. the financial control the masculine thing should be gone to the male person and not to the female person no doubt we have so many of the female they are doing amazing thing on the financial front but still they are not enough you can just count them on the on your fingertips and that's done Yeah. So I think that's a one another issue when it comes to the gender discrimination in the relationship when there is like you know a big gap. Hundred um, percent. That's what we discussed even last week in the panels discussion as well. Finance. Start taking control of your own finances. 
even if you have a very good relationship even if you have you have full control over the situations and the decisions still be very much involved in the financial discussions as a relationship matters that will give you an extra edge as compared to the masculine as we are saying in the context of men and start working towards our own freedom in relationships and make the uh gender bias again a gap little bit less than where we are right now um i don't think it can be filled up within one day or one conversation but no, every right. single drop will be able to make the uh, make the difference in the world out there um can on I, that I note just put in a very tiny example sorry ladies i'll put in a tiny um, i was speaking to a man on a perspective basis of you know alliance and whatever all that jazz so um i am pro signing a uh, prenuptial agreement i favor that and i think it is safe for everyone not just for mm -hmm. women everyone should be aware of it and should at least go through the paperwork to see what's all given in the clause yeah. so right from day one i was like you know i'm not doing it so that i can steal your assets one point of day i'm just trying to get a sign it so that you save your assets i save yeah. mine right yeah they did not understand whatever i was trying to tell them the family mm -hmm. came back to my mom and dad and say aapki beti to divorce ke baare mein baat kar rahi hai pehle se even before mm -hmm. she's trying to get married yeah. and my parents were very disheartened because again south asian culture right you, you your daughter needs to get married as if that's her only existence mm -hmm. i stood my ground i said i have built my assets with sweat hard work i have yeah. done whatever it could in a western country i'm not going to do, lose that for anybody And if that person is educated they will say yes because i am not trying to steal anybody's asset right yeah. i'm just trying to safeguard mine as well as theirs yeah. should a rainy day come any day yeah they obviously kind of stood their ground and they backed off i did not buy and i'm like okay if you don't understand the healthy okay. conversations yeah. that you need to have yeah. you go your okay. way and i go mine exactly. so i just want to reiterate a lot of ladies have told me oh you should not be thinking about signing a prenup i said i all of us should be thinking about it because exactly. we work very hard for our money a man yeah. does a woman does anybody does why shouldn't we i'm not saying that we will be getting divorced but what if some day we are faced with a calamity in our life shouldn't we be prepared but you know this is a gender bias problem a woman speaking about her assets oh my god she is a blaring red flag please keep her out of the family please exactly. to all your listeners don't treat us like that we are safeguarding everybody's best interest and nobody's money comes easy so that's the yeah. service thing i wanted to put out there yeah no thank you so much chris that was wonderful aditi sorry you were saying something oops did aditi did we lost you okay kavita do you have anything I just um had a thought when we were speaking and and Chris said you know the the other side of the spectrum you automatically put there I think it's about harmony rather than one gender in whatever issue or whatever dimension it is of the relationship uh, partnership or you know whether it's the daughter in law and the mother in law or you know if it's with the different genders so the male um in the families and the female in the families i think it's about finding that harmony you know we we all including the men have our strengths and weaknesses and i think it's about finding that harmony and where you know the yin and yang how how can we complement each other yeah. rather than you know having to compete and you know you know who takes the higher position in the financial things and who takes the higher position in the domestic chores and who takes the higher position with the kids and you know those kind of things so i think it's about finding the harmony yeah and and being able to teach our our children both females and males about what is acceptable and what isn't and then where they also can find that harmony Yeah particularly having three boys so I don't I won't have and be able to have that direct influence as in in child rearing times and ages um with a female I have to make sure I pass on this information and mm. attributes to my three boys so that yeah. they become better partners and better you know male operators even in their workforce and their friend circle um and anywhere that they interact that they become a good 
you know, male person yeah. um, in, a, in a community. Absolutely. Or maybe we can say a good human being. So we can say a better, better word of humanity rather than male or female, rather than just um, thinking about that gender bias or gender roles at all in, in the context of relationships or families. Um, Aditi, we lost you for a second. Welcome back. Um, yes. Do you want to share something on the same context? You were saying something and then we started with our conversation. Well, yeah, I think um, I was just kind of building up essentially about the kind of, con you know, the education and the upbringing that we can do as well. We are the mothers of today. Um, and, you know, we are raising the generation which is going to be taking on the reins tomorrow. And mm -hmm. what is it that we can actually do? Like, you know, I have a son and a daughter. So just, you know, the way I try and build it up and um, a lot has to do with the kind of cultural upbringing that we have. So, uh, we all have, um, we're aware that, you know, we are celebrating the uh, the Navratras, which is when you are actually worshipping the female deity. And yeah. uh, at my house, you know, we've always had that ritual that it's not just going to be where I'm going to be making my daughter do the rituals. She is going to be part of it, but my son's also going to join it. So, yeah. um, you know, it's just these small little things. Uh, when you have Raksha Bandhan, you know, you have this thing saying that the brother is going to protect the sister. Why is it that, you know, it's not a bond of friendship? Why can't it be the other way around? When we are trying to create that society where it's going to be absolutely, you know, equitable, where we are trying to make sure that we tell the girl that, you know, you are no less than a boy. You do not need protection. You need yeah. the love. And so does the boy, so does the boy, because that really brings about his emotional quotient. Today he's a brother, tomorrow he's going to be the husband. Tomorrow, yeah. that's the way he's going to really respect how to treat that woman who is wanting to protect her assets. How to treat a woman who wants to greet the guests who are at the door, because that's how she has actually grown up. How to really, you know, do all of those things. So I feel that, you know, um, sometimes we take a lot. And that's why, you know, one of the things that I really um, do quite a lot is when I talk to people, when I talk to a lot of uh, female friends as well, we try and have this conversation where we say that not everything from what we bring from the Indian or the cultural background is that's correct true. as well. It's always a possibility that, you know, things change. And um, so my the idea of bringing about, you know, the festivals was not to really incite anybody from a religious standpoint, but it's about trying to see how um, even those religious beliefs can actually be customized to suit the generation of today. And, yeah. you know, we're all living in that world. We're living and breathing in a multicultural society. That's where we can talk about things, where we can try and take this gender bias out as well. So, yeah. yeah, but um, I think um, it's it kind of really backfires a lot of times because there are times that a lot of mothers and a lot of sisters, they come to me and they are like, you're trying to corrupt this next generation. Why don't you do the things that the way, you know, they were to be done? Why can't you just put that red tikka on your daughter and not really put uh, it on your son as well? Uh, I'm like, you know, that's my way of really taking it to the next level of yeah. not really creating a biased society of tomorrow when my son stands up tomorrow and says that, hey, the house belongs to me or probably, you know, I'm the son. I am entitled to 50 percent of the share yeah. or 100 percent of the share. And, you know, all of those issues. So, yeah, that, that's what I felt. And I yeah. think, um, Dr. Chris, I would really appreciate that, you know, what you've done for the prenup as well, because um, a lot of women, because I mentor a lot of women as well, a lot of them have come to me and they are in a situation where they have been, um, you know, the society that we come from, they have been in Australia for a number of years and they yeah. have built their livelihoods and the husbands because they wanted to marry from the Indian subcontinent. They got married. The husbands came here. They were, you know, they were not used to the way the Australian society works because both husband and wife have to come, you know, do the work equally. You can't really expect that you're going to keep sitting in the bed with your morning tea and your morning parantha is coming your way. 
So, uh, but does that this does this actually good. happen nowadays? Is it? it it's still the it's same. Like husband sense. sits. And I and I would I like to add in because. Based on how I've started talking, a lot of my friends also have similar backgrounds. People have started treating us as individuals who hate men. Like yeah. people will think that, oh, she's a woman, she hates men. I would like to break the ice by saying we don't hate men. We just want equity, and that is applicable for a man in my life and for myself as well. Yeah. I want to see my partner's assets as well as mine because both of us have worked very, very hard to get yeah. where we. At, right yeah. we don't yeah. hate men but if a man is doing something which is unfair i will not wait to call it out and i think that should be the norm of the society and based on what aditi also mentioned uh, puja you know the society has a deep problem like when we are growing up our brothers are told you can't cry right it places a huge trauma on all the men yes no matter how hard they want to open up to us as their partners they can't because they've been taught mard bano like wow. this is a toxic statement in itself right on the other hand if we are like you know we are playing out we are being very boyish ladka mat bano try yeah. to be feminine yeah. so this yeah. is a exactly. deep rooted problem and this bias starts from the day you are born if yes. you are born as a woman you are expected to be very subtle naive feminine if you are born as a man you can't cry and people in this generation i see so many of us are carrying on with that trauma because they didn't have proper avenues to open up they don't know where to go a lot of men can't open up to their partners for that reason ki if i open up and cry she will think i'm weak and yeah. i am meant to be her protector she yeah. won't trust me and this yeah. is you know this starts from home itself so charity begins at home we got to see how we are raising our kids and that has to be unlearned rather than yes. learned exactly And I want to add something. What Aditi said yeah. before about the festival and the custom—it's a recent example. I went to one of the pujas and one of the uh, family friends there. It was some goddesses puja was happening. Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, there was uh, Lord Sun was coming home, and the wife of Sun Randalma was doing something, and some okay. there was some big context. The priest asked the lady to touch the feet of her husband, mm -hmm. and. I naturally asked the question. I'm like, you are doing this puja for to get the blessing of a goddess. Mm. Then why goddess of this house is touching the feet of a man? Shouldn't it be equal or like you know what's the reason behind that? And I got so much of the backfire being nastic. Anyway, I I'm kind of nastic. So it's like you are nastic. You are not believing in any of the rituals. There's a reason. This is this. And I ask the simple question. I'm like, you are praying the goddess. Why this goddess is touching the feet of a man and not the man is doing that? And uh, what's the logic behind doing that? Because it's a goddess. It's a female. It's the so connection is there. Yeah. But as as you say, so that's a discrimination, and this discrimination starts from our family, from the generations, and we never realized it is as a discrimination. We always yeah. taken it as it's okay. It has yeah. it's like that. We accepted it as a normal term. But now, when you put that as a question, then the question starts. It hurts the society yeah. because yes. they have there was no more why. And I think we are question mythological rules, right? I'll tell you the other problem with the society where I've seen discrimination happening is when you have a widow in your family versus if a man loses his wife, yeah. right? Yeah. If if yeah. it's a widow, she's literally shunned. I'm talking about ten, fifteen years now. I think norms are changing, and there yeah. are certain religious practices where widows are not allowed to be a part of. Right? Yes, and you can't yeah, question yeah. that your household might be having that puja, and you can't question that why is that woman not a part of it? It's not her fault that she lost her husband, right? She's already exactly. miserable. But yeah. if her husband loses his wife, from the very probably the next six months, you should get remarried. You should find a wife, mother for your children. But if a yeah. woman loses her husband, that's it. Stay away from everything. Now I think with a lot of scrutiny, things are changing. But I've seen that my grandma. Lost uh, her husband at a very young age. She was just thirty-eight. She has carried on the trauma for I think forty, forty-five years because everywhere where she used to go with us, people could, you know, we could feel that eye gaze that yes. you know, you wear a certain color, don't yeah. get involved in certain religious practices, and I literally can't stand that. So yeah, 
all of these things need to be changed but when you start questioning these things people will be you don't believe in your gods how dare exactly. you question your god exactly the same thing happens in my family i lost my dad like 10 12 years before my mother is going through the same situation every time she goes into the wedding she goes into the puja yeah. or somewhere the same thing happens so i can totally relate to what you're saying but at the same time my mom is very very much aware what she needs to do when i raise the question she by herself because of the expectational society values and then from the uh, relatives sisters and brothers and everyone around her puts a question like ab tum when i ask this ab tum zyada bade ho gaye ho ab tum humein samjhaoge this yeah. is exactly what i get the answer even and when with i our weddings it, also uh, puja um even with our weddings like i'm a bengali i've seen in my yeah. bengali the mother of the bride is not supposed to see the wedding yeah. at all right yeah i made it very clear to my mother like whenever i get married you are going to be there i don't care what others are going to tell me and yeah. my grandmom is going to be included in every religious practice that happens because yeah. she she's my second mother why yeah. would i care about what 10 other people wo to waisi bhi gaaliyan bakenge aapka khana acha nahi tha aapki jewelry achhi nahi hai they're going to say all this nonsense anyway you will see my wedding and i don't understand people are not averse to change also nowadays we are seeing a lot of change but why does the mother of the bride have to miss out on the most special day of her daughter's life these things are beyond me i don't get that honestly and again i think as a parents you you can correct me if i'm wrong somewhere but as a parents also we are always confused from the childhood itself as a girl child we pray to the goddess in in north indian specifically it's kanya poojan it's a uh, navratri time it's all the time then you become as an internal feelings you become the goddess and then papa ki pari beti and everything we are so pampered from the love that that truly i mean i truly appreciate and nurture and nourish all the values passed on that time however at the same time we are being educated for should and shouldn't if i am the goddess as a women or as a girl then why i should learn about should and shouldn't i should be open to my own decisions my own discussions all the time and then immediately after marriage that level of goddess comes down to the person who just takes care of the home like a homemaker i am the person who wakes up at 4 o'clock takes care of my kids kids lunch um and and work on my assets and when i ask for my assets then you ask me the question you are so blunt that you are asking me these financial things isn't it like so much of variations in from i am changing as a woman it's not me me but as a woman i'm re- representing to everyone out there if one moment i'm a goddess second moment i am i'm not a goddess third moment i'm the person who is like working as a ghar ki bai and everything so who actually i am am i not losing my identity in the all societal expectations what is the best level of expectations that we can change as in mindset that 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 is ex- accepted by everyone as a dad we all accept as a mother parents in laws everyone comes on that norms okay this is what we can expect i'm happy for you to be a normal human being don't be the goddess don't be the wife don't be the i want you to be a normal human being and just be do good in your in your relationships do good best serve the best value out of that isn't it true uh, i'm just reading one of the comments here and i think puja as you are saying as a parent like somebody said that uh, you know when it times to come the clean the utensils the daughters always ask to do it not the brothers yeah so i have a 5 year old little one he was saying like i want to do the dishes today i knew it was not going to possible because 5 year old he doesn't know what to do so yeah. but i was like okay you want to do do it he did it he was trying so i took took a video and i put it on the social media i was saying he decided to help me and here he is helping me at that time i think he was 4 and half or 4 years old I got so much of the backfire saying why you are teaching your kid at this such a young age to clean the dishes and all this thing I answer it's a life skill it's okay it's done that's it after a couple of weeks he come hungry and he was like can i make a biscuit and cheese for me for the evening snack and i was like yeah go for it he did it and i took a small video and i'm like 
here he is do, doing himself and i'm happy that he can do it again got a backfire why you are teaching can't you do it it's just a simple task to put this cheese on the biscuit and do this and give it to it uh, after few few weeks uh, he was cleaning because he did all these uh, scratches and scribbles and everything and he was like oh, i'm so sorry mama can i clean it and i'm like yeah by all means clean it have this jaru and have this thing and clean it yeah i took a video again and i said see this is what he it's a life skill that's nothing yes. about the gender it's just the life skill and he needs to yeah. understand that this is his job he did wrong he need to correct it Yes. this is what he is hungry he needs to feed yes. himself yes. this is what he needs to do but still after, even still when this you know in the social media after few times some some videos go viral accidentally mm-hmm. i am still getting the backfire after a year that why you are teaching this young boy to do the thing which he is not required and i'm like no he requires because it's a life skill yes it's not the gender thing it's nothing if he is hungry he needs to know how to feed himself yes. exactly and, and the, the the moment we as a as a person we can pass that on to our family to our kids i think half of the issue will be solved yeah true Absolutely. um we have a couple of comments here i'll quickly read it through and see if we have any questions for the to add on here otherwise we'll move on to the next question um in indian society you can't ask the salary of the future groom whereas about the girl they can ask any damn questions like what's the power of specs can cook or not etc that's what we have been talking about chris the first hand experience i shared her uh, sure this, this is my mom i'm sure the way she is oh 100% yeah <laughs> sure, <thank you. laughs> um okay next one i'm very fortunate and never faced any discrimination at any stage of my life that's why i'm not able to correlate this discussion oh, okay that's such a blessing that you have you haven't faced any discrimination which is really good but honestly it does exist a lot of time every moment every women face it one way or the other way in my opinion um most of us if not every at least most of us um at the house i was born family i got married okay next one even the name plates of the houses has husband's name on it and not wife's and even if the husband's name is like wife's name is there on the name plate that will be after husband's name it's this male and then him so yeah um no mother tell her son to clean the utensils but the daughter is told that it is not her job not her brother's that's the pain yes. there is no karwa chot for women men never keeps fast for his wife how true is that it starts with a girl reaches puberty when she is asked to sit out during the days which is ridiculous again if we talk about the periods why do uh, we all go through puberty like male and female both but then why do female has to sit outside they can't touch uh, the pickles they can't touch a couple of things at home they can't go to temples why is that 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 all thing happens i understand from the scientific perspective um, there were days in the past when we when we were not very hygienic or not very you mean um, not very really ready to go and touch the things for eating or anything i do understand all those things but now nowadays nothing like this is there we all are living in a modern society modern world but still we have the belief system going intact what and why and how we can change that um the glass in the the women in the house has to nurture and stand up for the young lady in the house yes that's the point we have to stand up the glass ceiling has to be the first broken at home and everything else will fall in place absolutely true if you are a second rate citizen in your home and then what can you expect from the outside world okay maybe that's a question if you are a second rate citizen in your home um anyone would like to answer this if you are a second rate citizen in your home then what can you expect from the outside world okay i think i i i have a good example of that one of my very good friends she was like we studied together we were so close we were so close 
But in her house, there was a lot of restrictions, a lot of restrictions, like she can't go out, she can't wear this, she can't eat this, you can't do this, you cannot do this. It's, there were, there were eight siblings altogether, brothers and sisters, and she was the youngest one, but she has the most restrictions. I can't imagine at this today's time how she was living in, in that. And that's but in Australia? Uh, she was in India. So okay. there was a lot of restrictions when we were growing up uh, in our schools. Like, you can't wear this thing. It should be like this. You have to have your hair like this. You don't yeah. eat this thing on that day. You don't eat that, those things on those days. And um, they were not. she wasn't allowed to study after the 10th grade uh, mm -hmm. because 10th grade is a big thing in her house. Like, she, she it was completely no. Uh, after facing a lot of this thing, a lot of restrictions and no, and you are not good and like, you know, you are going against the family rules and everything. You study till 10th grade. You want to study more. You want to take part in a dance, not to bow, like, you know, parivar ka naam parbaat kar doing all those, those stuff. I think after, after reaching 15 or 16 years, hearing those comments from inside the house that, you can't do that. You can't do that. You are against the family. You are a black sheep of the family. You are not good. She took everything as her strength. Yeah. And she rebelled, but she rebelled in a gentle way. Like, you know, Mahatma Gandhi says, in the gentle, most gentle world, you can shake the world. So she took mm -hmm. the help of the teachers. She, she made sure that her teachers are on her side. And that's how she finished her 12th grade. After 12th grade, she again took the help of another teacher's to let her to do the university degree and everything. Today, she is one of the very known uh, professor in one of the known universities in Gujarat. But she was treated so badly. Even I, even today, I'm thinking about her. If if she couldn't take that thing as like, okay, everybody's saying I'll do that. I'll make sure the world will know me. Not I won't. I don't want to die unnoticed, yeah. undone. I think she decided from that 10th grade moment where there was a lot of pressure that you can't study, you are a black sheep, you study 10th grade. Our family mein koi nahi padha, tum ladki ho ke padna chahti ho, kyun padna chahti ho, chab pueda karna, all these sort of things. But yeah. now today she is one of the very famous, very hmm. loud professor in one of the universities. So Amazing. I think that's... That's really the story. Big, big what I can share that she was definitely treated as a second rate or the yeah. third rate citizen in her family. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely a very inspiring story. Yeah, Aditi, go ahead. No, I think I'm I'm just building on to what Harita said. Um, I do feel that, you know, adversity does bring the best out of you. So it's an opportunity, you know, what you go through. I'm not saying or not belittling um, you know, the fact that women go through so much. But it's what you try and really stand up against all the odds. Um, and probably, you know, I, I just share my experience here as well. Um, across the years while I was kind of working as well, I started my career back in an industry which was totally male driven. I worked, I started off in the sales industry for paints. Now, paints as an industry, you can imagine, was totally about all the painters and the contractors sitting out, having their beauty and, you know, doing that. Um, and I started off with, because that, that's how I was kind of brought up, you know, being a boy of the house, literally do what you want, what your heart goes up for, do that. And I realized that pretty early that, you know, the opportunity, it was an obstacle, essentially. I was given a posting where um, there was totally about 40 kilometers away from my house, which was fine. I was used to the travel being from Delhi, um, but it was a warehouse. Now, that warehouse is amidst absolutely a place which is completely, you know, amassed um, a lot of farmlands and everything like that. It's a paint warehouse and there was not even a washroom. So you imagine what would you go through? You would, if you wanted to go to the washroom, you would try to go to the person who is managing the store, take the keys from him, drive up to about a place which is four kilometers away for a decent washroom. So mm. it's it's about the facilities and the infrastructure as well. I did that. I, I mean, I did that. I started really shouting out and I created so much of noise about it that... Uh, 
being the first management trainee you know they just said that you know we will listen to you but i tried to tell them this you know when i presented my case after a year of doing all that 4 kilometers up and down trying to take one trip to the washroom uh to just kind of you know just just justify to myself that being a woman this is the reason you know why i'm doing it because yeah. hey, the men really had that opportunity to go ahead and really use the farmlands or there was a totally you know one day but um, what that brought about was when i came when when i put that proposal out for them they were able to then set up and they were able to this organization was able to reach out to a lot of these organizations which would be putting up sanitation and hygiene in place so they were able to create that um all the other management trainees who then joined up after me were super you know they were girls who started really joining up and the organization became pretty high up in the ladder because otherwise you know that everybody was like who's going to do sales yeah why would you do sales you're going to and that to a pain so you want to go and sell that going to try and work with them but i feel that you know it it did really pave a lot of path but yeah. um bringing that aspect it really there are these discriminations and biases that exist in particular industries as well which are seen more male dominated and the minute you say that you're going to try and do it uh you would get lip service essentially which is going to be from the management saying that wow we are promoting diversity we are doing we're going to have the first female who's going to be up there so do you have the facilities so you know that's where they have to be women and i was reading in this article by sudha murthy who's uh, mm. who also spoke about that she had a very similar concern and i was yeah. like glad that you know i can now share this that i went through this issue as well and i was able to do something probably i didn't take too many years to do it but a year down the line so it's about you know harita the way you said your a friend also was able to do it and the way now she's going to create ripples with that small stone that you know has been yeah. thrown she's going to be really mentoring and empowering so many other women so hats off to her there and puja if i can also take a split second to answer yeah. that question Yeah. Uh, I don't know which home this person is referring to but yeah. um if that person is referring to a father's home or her own house after she's gotten married um I would like to point out something here that you know it's not, marriage is not the be all end all solution for each one of us if you can live by yourself you can be as sufficient as complete as an individual as anybody else in a committed or a non committed relationship can be because in many south asian households the thought that has been ingrained in our thought is you know you have to get married you have to get you have to become a good wife so you have to get married so what i would like to tell you is to draw to your expectation you have to first take this thought out of your mind that you are only dependent on someone at each stage of your life you can be yeah. independent and be complete by yourself and i think something else that i would like to add in very quickly is it's very important that at any stage of life you take a step out of your comfort zone live by yourself travel by yourself see the world through your own lens before you settle down with a person with a dog whatever i have been a hostelier i've i've taken my hostel life in nit raukela it's one of the best feelings right you you get yeah. to control your own finances you get to take care of your health you get to take care of your friend life and you also in touch with your parents and you are out of your comfort zone you're out of your niche right your parents are not always there as helicopters over your head and supporting yeah. you looking out for you that has helped me shape so many things in my life that has helped yeah. me see through people right if i had always been in delhi along with mom and dad i would not have been able to survive one day in melbourne by myself it's yeah. only that i was traveling for my engineering then masters and this and that everywhere when i came to melbourne i was like all right this is another place i have to build up my little world here as well so i would like to tell this to all the ladies and also parents who have little girls try sending out your girl to a, a hostel a boarding or a solo trip or be that she is safe because that helps build a part of you that would be never possible if you're yeah. always in your supported dynamic in relationships so i hope i have answered that question and no 100% you did and all of you did in your own unique ways by story sharing and everything um however uh, this statement is hold true for everyone like men or women both of them are 
they should rather go out of their comfort zones and feel mm -hmm. safe in their own way without being dependent on their partners or supposedly right. in the marriages. So um, as far as the solo trips, it's just a matter of giving permission to the solo trips. We give, I could give you a first hand example of what I recently heard from my friend's daughter. On that particular day, my friends visited my home. I have two boys and one of the boys invited his friends for the sleepover party. So we have a separate basement sort of stuff. So they were doing sleepover over there. Fine. You enjoy your party. I'm with my friends. Their family members are here and we, we all are good. Um, on that note, I just simply asked my friend's daughter, how are you doing? Do you do sleepover? Whatever is your plan? What's happening? And she busted out so much. It's like, my mom doesn't anytime allow sleepovers. She never allows me to go to my friend's house. He always say, no, you can meet, but till 8 or 9 p.m. After that, you have to come back. And I was in my heart. I didn't ask it because it was not the right situation to challenge that straight away. But honestly, that was my question. And I'm I'm, I'm still wondering, why is that so? Are we feeling unsafe even living in Australia, even with all the things? I understand things happen in India, Australia, geographically or globally, anywhere or everywhere. However, we still believe that we are living in the Western world. If we have to do, living in Australia, I'm saying particularly, if we have to do all these things here as well, what was the point of coming to the Western countries at the first point? Why did we would not stay over there and follow the custom and the rituals and the thoughts over there? Why did we choose to come out of the country, out of our comfort zone, leaving the families behind and still following the gender bias, still not allowing the wives to go out without husband's permission? When the wives go out and many times we still get all the questions, where are you? What's happening? When are you going to come back? Who is cooking the food? My kids are hungry. I am hungry. Why the man is not supporting the wife 100% in all the aspects? Sometimes you go for the party, I handle. Sometimes I go for the party and I handle. It, it's just creating the equal and equitable resources and the meaning to all the problems, all the situations where you and me are in this moment. Look. I feel that you know, this is how we've conditioned ourselves. We as women as well, we start. we have that ability to you know say that chalta hai it's all right we accept it this is how we've seen parents probably this is how we've seen the society and you know i speak that because i know a lot of people say this to me and i'm the one who's absolutely a rebel in that aspect if i take a month off literally and i take a month off literally away from kids and give the entire thing to my husband to manage he does exactly the same thing yeah. But the fact of the matter is, when my friends hear that, they come back and they're like, Yaar, aise kaise ho sakta hai? how can you do that? How can you be away? Are you traveling? How is he managing the whole thing? And I said, because that's how he's brought up. That is exactly how we as women also, we are like, nah, nah, husband has to go. We can just sit at home. We can do our thing. We don't question the status quo. The minute we put that thing on ourselves, that we have the ability, we can do yeah. it. Ask the yeah. question. I think that's where it starts. Ask yeah. the questions. Don't accept the status quo. Exactly. No, that's absolutely the apt statement for this um, for this matter. Like, start asking the questions, the right questions at the right time, and also not indulge yourself into the arguments, but work with the facts yeah. and finding the purpose behind it. Why we are doing so? What is the purpose behind it? What are the intentions? And then take it forward. Uh, on, on that context. Um, Kavita, would you like to add on something here? Uh, yep, yeah, we can. I think you're mute.
probably some problem with Kavita's internet, but that's fine. We can keep going. Look, I was intending to go in the academics part as well, but honestly, the relationship took all the time. I didn't get a chance to talk about. It's just a so much sensitive topic that once we start putting our stories, our experiences and thoughts in place, it takes a lot of time in the conversation. And I'm glad that we are speaking about it because one thought, one seed, one point, one observation, one story experience can change someone's life out there. So um, it's so important to talk about our experiences. Um, and Kavita, you are back. I think we lost you for a minute or so. Oh, sorry about that. That's all right. Uh, would you like to add on to this point now that we were discussing? Sorry, did um, I miss the last point? Can you repeat the question, Puja, in case I'm... Um, okay, so majorly we were discussing so far about the questions that we have from one of our uh, audience. Like, if you are a second-rate citizen in your home, then what can you expect from the outside world? Yes, and I think it, it ties into the comment I made earlier about, you know, what we know, uh, what we see around us becomes our normal. Um, yeah. So if if you have particular biases or particular um, expectations, um, then you think that's how I am supposed to be. That's how the world is supposed to treat me. That's how everybody around me is supposed to behave. Um, therefore, it does become that. Um, and like I was saying, um, I particularly struggle with a particular aspect. I'm a naturally a um, a giver and a a carer. So I will automatically domesticate myself in any relationship, whether if, if it, even in a family environment or a family yeah. gathering, I'm the one that's doing the dishes and cleaning up and cooking if it needs to or feeding the kids. So I, I really do believe I think it becomes the harmony thing just because I am that. I don't need to change myself now and not do things because I'm trying to change a bias or a expectation i think i should be allowed to be 100 percent myself but not have that pressure or that expectation that because you are that type that you're always going to be cooking or always going to be cleaning and everything is your job or your responsibility in that relationship and i think it's about that harmony of finding what your persona is yeah uh, we touched upon, you know, heterosexual, you know, same gender relationships and all of that. And yeah. it's absolutely true. It's about finding the strengths and weaknesses, who needs to step up when and where and what time. And it doesn't have to be each area always dominated by the same partner or person. Yeah. Um, yeah there are times when somebody else needs to cook because I'm out partying. Or dancing. <laughs> no, that's absolutely right. Well okay. done. A um, little point that I was thinking while Aditi was speaking out. It's like, you know, women sometimes also need to give that space to their partners. I have seen my friends badgering their partners every half hour. Where are you? What are you doing? Are you missing me? Please yeah. let the man breathe for Christ's sake. He's out with his boys. Yeah. Let him enjoy the night. He, of course, misses you, but that does not mean you badger him. And yeah. so, obviously, should the men. So, if you cage the man in, you will get that in reciprocation also, right? So, yeah. I am a very, very firm believer of space in a relationship. Yeah. You give me space, I give you two. Obviously, that has to be mutual. But I've literally seen ladies clinging on to their men and I get irritated if that girl is with me and she's calling her husband. I said, can you please either sit with your husband with or sit with us or with both. <laughs> both, both. And it's really irritating because yeah, I know. man is not able to enjoy. We are not able to enjoy. What are you doing? Everybody is a mature adult, right? And yeah. you can't prove that he's loyal to you just because he's on the phone to you every 30 minutes. If he has to yeah. cheat, he will cheat sitting next to you. So women also need to give that space. And I, I don't know if it's South Asian or it's omnipresent. Some yeah. women tend to act like babies in front of their men. And to be honest, it's very, very irritating. I'm not saying because I'm single. Even if I were married, it would have been irritating to me. So 
I think yeah. that space becomes a very important component of a mature modern relationship. relationship. Exactly. Look, we are talking about specifically on the occasion of International Women's Day. So talking about most of the women's rights, women's awareness, empowerment, and a lot of stuff. But trust me, when we come to the conversation of cracking the code or gender bias, it comes both ways. We have to tra train our uh, girls to be equally supporting men as well. Because I personally have clients where women are acting at the otherwise on the name of um, me time, my rest time. They are asking or projecting all the household work to the men, the man of the family including the feeding the babies or uh, refilling the toilet rolls or every single thing you talk about the house chores. Oh, it's my me time because I'm feeling tired at the moment. I just came back from work. Just because we are women and we, we are creating an awareness of women empowerment doesn't mean to be misused in the context. We need to make a balance of uh, equity of the resources, equity of the, the choices available. It's not the one way street. We have to face the other way as well. The more respect and the equi equality and the respect you give out there, you, the mutual you will get back in return. The space you will give, the space you will get. More communication you will give, more responsibility you will give, the better handling of the, the chores and everything in the relationship you will get at. Uh, Look, definitely a lot of conversation needs to be happening, but I think we are running short of time now. Um, so I would just quickly go for one question around the table and take your opinion on as a final thing, what can we do? Um, just in a few words, explain or suggest how we better educate ourselves on the gender discriminations, particularly in the context of sex, love, romance, or relationships? Um, I'll start with you, Aditi. I think for me, summing it up is essentially Gio or Gina, though. Literally, you know, you see what you would want, what is the best thing for you, because you need to, this is one life to live. Um, you see what you want to do rather than say that, you know, single out yourself as a woman or a man. It's a relationship. It's a two-way street. We cannot get anything if we do not give in. So we have to do that without anybody feeling the, you know, the burden of anything which they cannot be. It could be the burden of a bias that they bring about. It could be a burden of any, you know, mismatched expectations. It could be anything. So yeah. you actually do what you feel is right for you. Have that conversation with your partner and just see what is there, you know, for him that works out. And that's what a balanced relationship is, in my opinion. So um, with that, you know, I think Gio or Gina, though, literally, and I'll just pass it on to the others. Yeah. Thank you, Aditi. Um, Harita. The thing is, in any of the relationship. If you don't feel 100% that you are there, agar kuch man mein aaya, you just speak up. You don't need to think to twice or thrice. That's what the relationship is. So you, you accept that space and you give that space. That if you are in relationship, you don't need to think twice or thrice. Oh my God, if I say or if I do this, what would be the reaction? When you reach to that openness, that, that stage, I think that's the best part in that. And at that point, I say there is no discrimination. There is no talk about the equality. It's just the mutual, proper relationship where you don't need to think twice that what I'm talking about. Yeah, true. Oh, lovely. Thank you, Arita. Um, Kavita? I think it's living the example, walking the talk, you know, being the role model. If I want to be treated as an equal, Mm. then I need to treat the other people in the relationship and in that space as equal, whether it be men, other women, the children, you know, my employees, my work colleagues, whoever that may be. I think that's the most important thing. And I, like I said, we all have our strengths and weaknesses, and it's about finding that harmony and being a human. Yeah, that's right. Not necessarily yeah. being the male or the female, in any in any relationship, like I said, personal or uh, work, but being a human. 
That's right. Thank you so much. Such a powerful statement with uh, being a human uh, rather than being male or female in your uh, in your thoughts and resources availability. Um, over to you, Chris. Um, wonderful word from all the panelists, but I just have three things to kind of summarize my thoughts on this. First is unlearning. We have learned, we've learned a lot of things. We've learned a lot of practices, heritage, tradition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we are we are living in constantly evolving times, right? Things are evolving, our mindsets are evolving. We have to be ready to unlearn what we have learned in order to accommodate space, not only in our lives, but first in our minds. If my mind is cluttered, my life will be a mess. That's how I see things. Yeah. Secondly, is I think this is a time where rather than fighting for equality, we need to fight for equity. Yeah. Do I have equal resources in the relationship? Do I have equal <clears throat> Sorry, do I have equal access to put forth my thoughts in the relationship? Men, women are not meant to be physically and biologically equal. We can never be so, right? We were designed in a certain way. But we can be getting our own equity if we stand up for it. And this yeah. is a time when we should be embracing equity in all aspects of our life. Pay gap, having a child, looking after the child, you name it. We should be striving for equity. And the last thing is... First, we need to have that relationship with ourselves. We need to be in perfect tandem with our own selves. Then only we can put our 100% in a relationship with somebody else who we are new to or we have loved for X number of years. For me, if I'm not complete or if I'm draining from a empty cup, the relation is going to fall over. So for all the single ladies, I would like to advocate, don't feel left out that, oh, I'm not married. Is this the end of my life? Nothing is the end of the life. You are good as you are marriage divorce if you've lost your partner if you're not married everything is complete in itself you should have that confidence within yourself to stand up for what is right put forth your voice and just make yourself heard that's all i would like to say thank you no thank, thank you, you so much chris that was really wonderful um not only chris but all of you are very strong women out there um big applaud for all of you and that was really lovely hearing um each individual perspective and experience and story. Um, look, the idea we can keep talking about it because it's an, a numerous list and uh, discussions points to consider going forward. However, things starts with a mindset and asking um, the questions challenging the gender bias uh, problems out there and start working towards creating opportunities for the inclusion. Um, that's my uh, thought process and I, I I always work and I keep on working with you, your support as well. Um, that was really lovely discussion. Thank you so much, Harita, Chris, Aditi and Kavita for your feedback and thought sharing. And thank you everyone who has joined out there, um, Inspirational Divas. It's really wonderful to have your experiences, your questions coming and constant encouragement for all of us as well i uh, would share the the session as a youtube link as well and then we'll you can you can spread the word around but that was so wonderful thank you once again thank you thank you for having thank us you. Yeah, thank oh, you oh, Great